Okay, in this video we've uh, already created the legs and the back of our chair uh, structure. We've just got to fill in the gaps essentially right now. Uh, I'm going to do what I did with the other previous groups in the hypergraph and right click on my groups and actually go and say collapse just so these are a little bit more manageable. Now's a good time as well. I've got chair, seat, my seat supports, slats, both my leg, group, leg groups. Uh, I'm going to save this scene as a new Maya ASCII file, just because I've made a couple of significant changes. Don't want to lose them. So this will be chair version 02, and I will hit save. Now to finish up this selection, uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six horizontal slats that need to be built across the back of the chair. Well, same as I did for the bottom, I'm actually going to build one and then duplicate them. So let me come in and grab yet another cube. I'm going to take this cube and scale it together just a little bit. Uh, you'll notice that my slats as well sit right in front of the chair. So that's where I'm going to position them. I'm going to scale this out and hit spacebar and enter now my front orthographic view because this view is going to allow me to see just how close I need to put this along the edge. And I'll position this along the top. And now you can see, of course, that this is way out in front. I'll hit E to grab my rotate tool and let's rotate this so that it's essentially flat. I think I could also probably use this being scaled together just a little bit more. And now I think this is looking correct and ready for my six extra additions. Before I do that, however, I need to curve this just like we did with the bottom piece. So I will go into my attribute editor, go into my initial creation tab, and in this case, let's add five subdivisions here. I'll right click on my object and choose vertex, grab all of the middle five, push them back just a little bit, then grab just the inner part and push that back a little bit more. So if we look from the top down, you can see the curvature that I have. Well, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to duplicate it and move it down. It's going to be easiest to probably see from the side. Each time I duplicate this, I'm going to move them forward. So there's my second piece. Let's give them a little bit more space. Control D again will duplicate. And there's my third piece. Now let's grab all three, duplicate them at once, and move them down. And we've got six. If I go into the hypergraph, here are my six cubes. I'll select those. I'll hit Control G. And I'll rename this back underscore of underscore chair. And go to modify and choose center pivot. I'll collapse my back of chair group. And I'll add this to the chair group. Now here's what I've got. I've got a chair group with individually labeled subparts. And I've got a chair, which if we compare it to the original in the diagram, looks for the most part pretty similar. If I look at the geometry used to create this chair, well, I don't really have a ton of faces here. It's very easily manageable, very easily editable. And I think we've come to a conclusion. One of the great parts of this being in a group is that I can now actually grab my scale tool and scale up or down this chair if I need to, or maybe even rotate the chair to the side to create different proportions for it. But I'll leave it as is. As long as it's on the ground plane, I feel it's fine. Uh, everything's set up. One of the good things I always like to do when I'm done with everything is go to Edit, Delete All by Type, History.
I'm going to now remove all of my construction modeling history from the scene. That makes sure that my chair is ready to go and is ready to import into an animation. If I've got an animation about characters who sit around on a patio, well, now I'm ready to go. So hopefully you found this uh, tutorial series interesting. Uh, there'll be a couple more um, just like it dealing with other projects of a similar nature. Um, please check back um, to www.andrewkline.net slash ai.html for more tutorials just like this in Maya, ZBrush, and Photoshop. Uh, this has been Andrew Klein. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you very much.